uh, we will continue our study of uh, algebra, vector algebra. Uh, I had uh, told you about uh, uh, certain basic geometry of uh, uh, vectors. Now I want to continue in this. I want to define, I want to tell you the definition of what is dot product of two vectors. Recall our vectors are all in three dimensional space. So I denote them like u vector u is u1 i cap plus u2 j cap plus u3 k cap. I told you u1 is the i component, u2 is the j component, u3 is the k component. Similarly, I have another vector v, which is v1 i plus v2 j plus v3 k. And I want to define their dot product, means some sort of product of these two. Uh, I won't go into too much details, but here is the definition. Uh, there are two different definitions, but both are equivalent. Uh, first definition is, you might have seen this before, u dot v is mod u mod v into cos theta, where theta is the angle between u and v. So take two vectors, u and v, put them both at origin. Means u and uh, the position vectors, you just take that. And then there is an angle between them that is called the cos, uh, that is theta. You basically multiply modulus of u, modulus of v and cos theta. But you will get a number. This is not a vector. This is a number, this is a number, this is a number. So product of three numbers is a number. So this is the dot product. So answer to the dot product of two vectors is a real number, at least in our course. It's a number. It's not when you take dot product of two vectors, you will not get a vector. Instead, you will get a number. Scalar number is actually a real number in this case. Another equivalent way to define the same dot product is, I won't put the equivalence here, equivalent way to define this dot product is, so if u is u1i plus u2j plus u3k and v is v1i plus v2j plus v3k, then this expression u1v1 plus u2v2 plus u3v3. This is another expression for dot product. So we will confuse between these two. Confuse means basically we'll use either of them depending on our convenience. If I know u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, I'll use this obviously. If I know angles between the angle between the vectors and I know their moduli, moduluses of both of them, then I'll use this formula. So basically both are equivalent. I will not prove that again here. I mean, I'm telling again that I will not prove this here, but we will use both the definitions. Clearly, um, if angle between u and v is 90 degrees, then cos 90, which is zero. So u dot v is zero. So this is a sort of equivalent definition. u dot v is zero means u is perpendicular to v. We also, now I told you, uh, vector is a fancy name for arrow. Similarly, we will use fancy name for perpendicular also. We will say orthogonal. That's used often, orthogonal. I will show it sometime whenever it comes in a problem. So what have we learned from this slide? u and v are two vectors. u dot v is defined in one of these two ways. Mod u mod v cos theta where theta is the angle between u and v or u dot v is u1 u2 plus v1 v2 plus sorry u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3 and they are perpendicular if u dot v is zero. So this is the definition of dot product and a very simple consequence. Uh, what you must see is u dot u. What is u dot u? u is here I told you dot product of between two vectors u and v. I never said v should not be equal to u. If v equal to u what happens? So see in the definition u dot u is mod u into mod u into cos theta. Cos theta means uh, angle between u and uh, u only. u and u angle is zero. Cos zero is one. So u dot u will be just mod u into mod u, which is mod u square. But you, mod u square is nothing but, you know, you see in this definition, u dot v will be u1 into u1 plus u2 into u2 plus u3 into u2. That means u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square. That is what I have used here. u dot u is mod u into mod u into cos 0, which is mod u square. And that is nothing but u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square. So u dot u is u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square and that is mod u. So this is uh, one more consequence or will useful result. So I told you, 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 if u and v are perpendicular, then u dot v is zero. 
Also, there are some easy properties. I will not define, I will not prove them, but I just recall or I'll make a list of them. U dot V plus W is U dot V plus U dot W. This is called distributivity of dot product over addition. It's like our, what you learned in your school. 2 into 3 plus 5 is 2 into 3 plus 2 into 5. But there they are all numbers. Here we have vectors. And also u dot v is same as v dot u as you can see in this. What's in this on your screen? u dot v is u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3 which is same as v1 u1 plus v2 u2 plus v3 u3 which is same as v dot u. So u dot v is v dot u. So the dot product is commutative is what we use but I won't bother too much about these words distributivity, commutativity and things like that. Now uh, we have seen already that u dot u is nothing but mod u square. So if u is i, i dot i will be 1 because it's each or you know not just i dot i, j dot j, k dot j, they are all 1 because i dot i is mod i square. i is a unit vector by our definition. You recall the definition of i. It is i cap is unit vector in the direction of in the x direction. So i cap dot i cap or j cap dot j cap or k dot k cap dot k cap is 1. And i dot j will be what? i dot j will be 0 because by definition i dot j is mod i into mod j into cos of angle between i and j. i and j are perpendicular to each other, one on x axis, one on y axis. So cos pi by 2 is 0. So similarly j dot k and k dot i are also 0 because pairwise two of them are orthogonal. See, note here I have used the word orthogonal. Orthogonal means perpendicular. This is a fancy word for perpendicular. That's all. Mm, this again, I will not prove it, but I will give you a geometric interpretation because there could be a problem or two on this. Uh, you see, don't bother about anything in the picture. Just follow where my cursor is. V is a vector. U is a vector. This is a vector U. This is the vector V. Both of them have same initial point. Means I can always translate them to have the same initial point. Angle between them is theta. Now in this picture, I have not given the names for everything, but uh, I'll just only explain this. Cos theta, so this is a right angle triangle. So how do I see this? So u is here, v is here, and then assume that there is light coming from vertically from up. Each of these arrow show light coming from top. Then I want you to see that V will have a shadow whose length is this. The tip of V, the head of V, its shadow will be here. So shadow of whole of vector V will be from here to here. So let us check this. Uh, check this means let's see what is this got to do with dot product cos theta is nothing but this side that is the length of the shadow in divided by length of v length of v means mod v so this by this is v uh, is cos theta so mod v cos theta is nothing but this length cos theta is this by this so cos theta into this length of this is equal to length of this. So length of this means length of the shadow. We, technically we say length of projection of V on U. Understand this. Length of projection of V on U is nothing but mod V cos theta. So U dot V is mod U into mod V cos theta which is same as mod v cos theta is projection of v on u. So u dot v is mod u into projection of v on u. I have given a very geometric proof of this. Let's see if you need it in some problem, we will use this. So this is another, uh, not definition, but this is an interpretation, geometric interpretation of dot product. So it basically tells me how long is the length of v on u. Okay, let's work out some examples, then we will be able to make it out better, understand it better. So u is this vector 6i plus 2j minus 5k and v is this vector 3i minus 4j. Uh, we want to find u dot v and also find angle between them. So these are two vectors. If you uh, 
C in GeoGebra, you will be able to make out uh, just one sec. This is not good. Just one sec. So this is our uh, GeoGebra uh, means three dimensional space. And here I want these two vectors. U is uh, 6i plus 2j plus 5k. Sorry, minus 5k. 6i plus 2j minus 5k. That is 6, 2, minus 5. 6, 2, minus 5. So this is the point. Uh, is it mentioned here? 6, 2, oh, minus 5. That's why it's gone down. So one minute, I'll show you that. This point. Uh, here it is. You can see it. It's coming slowly. Uh, A is here. This is the point. This is 6, 2, minus 5. You can see it here. A is 6, 2, minus 5. That means 6 along x axis. Oh, it's smooth. Uh, just one minute. Uh, just one minute. Let me keep it proper. <clears throat> Anyway, it's there. You can see. See this point A is 6, 2, minus 5. Let us draw a vector from, or I mean, its position vector, which means this is the vector. Uh, it starts from origin and ends at uh, A, 6, 2, minus 5. So here you can see vector U. Uh, here it's called U, 6, 2, minus 5. You can see the vector from different angles. You can see this is 6, 2, minus 5, as you can see. You can see the coordinates also. Yeah. Okay. And another vector is uh, 3 comma minus 4. 3i minus 4j. So this vector is 3 comma minus 4 comma 0. So k component is 0. So this is the vector. This is the point. So now if I want a position vector of that point, that means I'll join this and this. Here is the, oops, sorry. From origin, I have to draw a vector to C. Here it is. So these are the two vectors which we have. The question is, what is the dot product of these two vectors? And you can see the vectors, both of them you can see nicely in this angle. So this, this is 6i plus 2j minus 5k and this vector is 3i minus 4j. Now one wants to find dot product and one wants to find the angle between them. So <clears throat> to do that, I will use this. So I have a formula u dot v is u1 u2 plus v1 u1 u uh, v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3 which means 6 into 3 plus 2 into minus 4 plus minus 5 into k component is 0 here. So I have to write 0. So 6 3 is 18 2 into minus 4 is minus 8 18 minus 8 is 10 that I can't really see it in the picture here but doesn't matter and mod u is this much. I want to find an angle between them. So u dot v, another definition for u dot v is mod u into mod v into cos theta. I can find mod u and mod v. So mod u is this much, modulus of u and modulus of v. And uh, cos theta is mod u dot v divided by mod u mod v, which is this much. So from this, I can I should be able to find what is theta. Theta is cos inverse of uh, this is if I have done all my computations correct, this will be 2 by root 65. So cos inverse of 2 by root 65 will be the angle between them. So I hope uh, from this GeoGebra also, it's not clear what the angle is, but what is the angle which you are trying to find, you can see from this picture, angle between these two black lines. That is what we are trying to do, black vectors. That is what we are trying to do. You see from different angles, you can see it is different. So that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be anyway. 
it's a three dimensional uh, object okay so <clears throat> let's continue i won't keep showing pictures for every problem uh, but uh, i hope some of them which are which i feel is illustrative i will definitely show now next problem is given two vectors u and v show that u plus v and u minus v are perpendicular which means orthogonal this is very straightforward perpendicular so i have to find what is u plus v given u and given v i can find u plus v we know how to do it you add the coefficients of i coefficients of j and coefficients of k so you'll get i plus 3i 4i plus 2j minus 2j plus j minus 3k plus 2k minus k similarly u minus v is subtract one from the other i minus 3i is minus 2i 2j minus minus j is plus 3j minus 3k minus 2k minus 5k so u minus v i know u plus v i know now you take the dot product of the two if you take dot product of these two that means you have to multiply the coefficients i components coefficients j components coefficient k components coefficients and add them so that is 4 into minus 2 plus 1 into 3 plus minus 1 into minus 5 which comes to be 0 so u plus v dot u minus v is 0 which means u plus v and u minus v are orthogonal or perpendicular both are same so that's what Oh, I've done the details here. So u plus v is this, u minus v is this, u plus v dot u minus v is this, which is equal to this, and hence u plus v and u minus v are orthogonal to each other. Okay, so to show two, I won't show this picture again now. Uh, you, if you want, you can install GeoGebra and plot these vectors, and you will see that they are actually perpendicular. Means you can see them being perpendicular also. So let us see one more problem. This is a very common problem, common kind of problem in VTO exams. Determine value of R so that U given by this, where you see the K component has a R in that. U is I plus 2J plus RK. So they haven't really told what U is because they have asked you to find. And V, which is given completely, they are orthogonal to each other. Uh, orthogonal to each other means there's only one equation u dot v is zero which means orthogonal means as i told it's perpendicular so perpendicular means you have to multiply coefficients i components coefficient j components coefficients k component coefficients and add them that must be equal to zero so here it is one into three plus two into two plus one into minus r into minus seven is zero so you get a simple equation in r solve for it and i hope i have done a correct uh, done it correctly if not please check yourself once and r equal to 1 in this so if you put r equal to 1 that means i plus 2j plus k is perpendicular to 3i plus 2j minus 7k that you should check uh, this is dot product there is another product which is called cross product cross product between two vectors u and v is defined like this this is a slight more complicated one you must have seen it in your physics classes in, since your class 9 10 or whenever uh, u cross v u and v are two vectors u cross v is mod u into mod v into sine theta it's almost like dot product but then suddenly it becomes a, it's a vector so this is a number mod u into mod v into sine theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors is a number this whole thing this number multiplied by n hat where n hat is a unit vector such that u, v and n hat constitute a right-handed system. Right-handed system means, um, uh, you know, if you see the corner of a room facing it, to your left is x-axis, to your right is y-axis and the one in front vertical is z-axis, positive x, positive y, positive z. This is a right-handed system. Essentially, if you go from u to v, uh, if you keep u to v like this, your hand, your right hand if it curls from u to v the direction in which your thumb is pointing that is the third vector so here then we say it's a right handed system or uh, you must have also heard of screw rule where uh, if you turn the screw from u towards v then the sc screw will proceed towards the direction of uh, u cross v means the third uh, vector so then I'll say u, v and the third vector form a right-handed system. Uh, so n hat is a, basically it's a unit vector perpendicular to both u and v. That's what I was telling you here. You have three 
vectors perpendicular to each other i j and k is in this direction uh, so they are, that's i j k form a right handed system that's an example of a right handed system so here u v and n hat must form a right handed system means n hat is a unit vector perpendicular to both u and v of course there are two perpendicular vectors but i want it to be a right handed system so then that determines which is which of the two is u cross v uh, there is equivalently i mean this is a conceptual definition we will use it of course sometimes when we need it for computational purposes there is another definition they are equivalent they are all same but i am not proving the equivalence in this set of lectures if u is given by this and v is given by this then their cross product is given by this determinant remember this determinant i j k and here u cross v so u1 u2 u3 first is u and then is v so second row is u1 u2 u3 second third row is v1 v2 v3 we know how to evaluate this determinant i into this into this minus this into this minus j into this into this minus this into this plus k into this into this minus this into this that's what i have written that's what you see on your screen this is the definition of cross product either you can use this definition or you can use this definition in fact we'll keep using both of them like how we did in dot product uh, we had two definitions and we had to go forth between those those two uh so for any vector u u cross u is of course what happens to u cross u uh, u cross u means in this definition u cross mod u into mod u into sine of angle between u and u angle between u and u is zero both are in the same direction so sine zero is zero so this whole thing becomes zero so u cross u is zero here also you can see that u cross u means this will also be u1 u2 u3 two of the rows are same in a determinant so this determinant will be zero so that's what you see on your screen and uh, i j k have this cyclic property i cross j is k k cross j j cross k is i k cross i is j it's like cycle i j k from i and j come k from j and k come i from k and i come j uh, easy to see these things you can if you don't uh, want to mug it up you can always use this definition i means 1 0 0 j means 0 1 0 so if you want i cross j these will remain the same u1 is 1 u2 is 0 u3 is 0 v1 is 0 v2 is 1 and v3 is 1 as 0 so substitute those and we will see it is equal to k similarly j cross k is also i k cross i is also j uh, and this is a nice thing Uh, u cross v is minus v cross u. It's not really commutative. If you change the order of product in cross product, then the sign changes. That's easy to see because in this definition, you see if you change to v cross u, then second and third row gets interchanged. If you interchange two rows in a determinant, the sign of the determinant changes. So that's what has happened here. So sign of the determinant has changed. So u cross v is minus v cross u. in particular j cross i is minus k because i cross j is k so j cross i is minus k similarly k cross j is minus i and i cross k is minus j so there are all things which we will keep on using cross product this is another very standard application if u and v are two vectors then mod of u cross v u cross v itself is a vector remember that dot product the product of two vectors is a real number but vector product or cross product the product is a vector so i can take its modulus what is the interpretation geometric interpretation of the modulus is that if you take u and v as two sides of a parallelogram then the area of the parallelogram is given by mod of u cross v very easy to verify but i will not do it here all you have to do is to just draw the perpendicular from here to here and see perpendicular from tip of v to u and then work out what is the area of parallelogram and you will see it to be mod of u cross v let's quickly go through few examples so how does typically problems would come something like this find the sign of the angle between these and this vector the two vectors are given you have to find sign of the angle between them obviously i'll go for vector product so u cross v is mod u 
mod of u cross v is mod u mod v sin theta. Here you see, conveniently I have thrown out that uh, unit vector because I am not interested in the vector. I just want to know sine of the angle. So sine of the, and that's a unit vector. So modulus of that is one. So that's why if this whole thing multiplied by one means this, this thing itself. So mod of u cross v is u mod u mod v sine theta. So sine theta mod u, so u cross v in this case is easy to check. u and v are given in coordinates. I mean, their i, j, k components are given. So I'll use this formula and expand this and see that u cross v is this much. So I'll find mod of u cross v, that is root of this square plus this square plus this square. And that is whatever this horrible number. So then u is this. So mod u is this, you can see on your screen, 3i plus 4j plus minus 2k, so it is mod u is this. Similarly, mod v I can find, once I know v, I can find mod v. And then sine theta is, as I said, the formula is mod of u cross v divided by mod u into mod v. So now I know all of them. From the previous uh, work, I know what is mod of u cross v. Now I know what is mod u and mod v. I substitute all of them, it looks some horrible number, but sine theta is square root of 774 by square root of 29 into square root of 30. That's okay. So that I found the sine of the angle between two vectors. Uh, this is another very standard kind of uh, question in the exam and also it's important for engineering. Find a unit vector perpendicular to both these two vectors. So I'm given two vectors, asked to find a unit vector perpendicular to this. Obviously, I will just go about finding u cross v because that is what is a vector perpendicular to both u and v. u cross v is a vector perpendicular to both u and v. So let's find that. So u, uh, u cross v by mod u cross v is the required unit vector. Uh, so just find u is given, v is given. So u cross v, I use the same formula i, j, k and coefficients of u here in the second row, coefficients of v here in the third row. I'll evaluate this determinant, you'll get some vector here. I hope I have done it correctly. Mod of u cross v is this much and the required unit vector is u cross v divided by mod, u, mod of u cross v. So u cross v is given here, mod of u cross v I just found. So this minus five, plus 11j plus 7k divided by square root of 195. That's the required unit vector. Yeah, it, it doesn't look nice, it's ugly, but that's what it is. Find a vector perpendicular to both these and has a magnitude 10. Uh, the, what is the difference between the previous question and this question? In the previous question, we were asked to find unit vector perpendicular to given two vectors. Now I want a vector perpendicular to both of these and has magnitude 10, that's okay. I'll first unit vector I'll find and then multiply by 10. So how do I find unit vectors? Exactly same as before. U cross V divided by mod U, mod of U cross V. And 10 times, this is the vector, which is unit vector perpendicular to both U and V. You multiply that by 10 is what I require. So first I have to find U cross V. So I'll use my usual formula. U is there v is there so coefficients of u i'll write here 1 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 coefficients of v 1 minus 2 3 i have written here so u cross v is this so mod u cross v is this so thus required unit vector is 10 times whatever u cross v by mod u cross v so it's a pretty ugly numbers but that's okay this is the method find area of the parallelogram whose sides are defined by these two. So this is one vector, this is one vector and both of them will define together a parallelogram. So on once it's area, I told you area of the parallelogram whose sides are u and v is given by mod of u cross v. So again, I have to find mod of u cross v. So find u, uh, find u cross v by knowing u and v and find its modulus. That itself is the answer. Square root of 50 is the answer here. I'm sure you can follow the numericals here. Idea is that if given two vectors, you want to find the area of the parallelogram defined by these two, just basically find its find their cross product and take its modulus. That's all. Uh, that's what has happened here. Using vectors, find the area of the triangle whose vertices are given by this. Okay. 
So vertices of a triangle are 100, 010, 001, very standard kind of thing. Uh, X axis, Y axis and Z axis intercept 111. So unit vectors on. Okay, so how do I do this? I want to find the area of that triangle. Understand that. I want area of the triangle. These three vertices will define a triangle and I want area of that triangle. So area of the triangle with A, B and C as vertices is this. This is a formula which I have not told earlier. So I am making this statement now. If I have a, if I have vertices, if I have a triangle whose vertices are A, B and C, then oh, but this is easy. There is nothing much here. A, B cross A, C is the area of the parallelogram with A, B and A, C as two of its sides. Half of it is the area of the triangle. That's all. So that's why I am not told that here. So this is what you have to observe. If you take A, B and A, C, draw a parallelogram with that, its area is mod A, B cross A, C. Half of that is the area of the triangle with, you know, your diagonal of a parallelogram. We'll cut it into two triangles and uh, the area of the triangle is what I want. So it's the half the area of the parallelogram. Area of the parallelogram is uh, AB cross AC, modulus of AB cross AC. So I have to find AB and AC. So how do I find AB and AC? I know if you give me point A, I know how to find the position vector OA. If I want to find AB, I need to know OA and OB, OB minus OA. So OB and OA I want to find. That I can find because A as a point has been given. So I just write position vector. Position vector of A is I clearly because 1, 0, 0. Position vector of B is 0, 1, 0, so which is J. Similarly, position vector of C is K. And AB is minus I plus J because AB is OB minus OA. This I've been telling you all the time. I've shown you an example in the last class also. So a vector and how it is related to the position vector of its position vectors of its tail and head. That's what we have done last class. So I'm using that vector AB is equal to vector OB minus vector OA. So OB I know, OA I know, I return both of them. Similarly, vector BC I know. Uh, because I know OC and OB. So I, you can see it on your screen. So now AB cross AC is what I want to find. So there's a usual determinant. I know AB and I know AC. So plug in their coefficients in the second and third row. And then I have IJK in the first row. Uh, carry out these um, calculations. I hope I have done the correct calculations. Please check once with yourself. Uh, next one is scalar triple product. Yeah, 10, 15 minutes. I should be able to finish this. I should be able to give you an idea of this. Uh, I'll continue. Uh, scalar triple product is another way of combining vectors. Scalar triple product of three vectors u, v and w is defined as u cross v dot w. This is the definition. I mean, it's a pretty, looks pretty bad and scary, but you really don't have to worry. U, V, W are three vectors. Scalar triple product is defined as U cross V dot W. Means first you take cross product of U and V and then take whatever answer you get, it dot it with W. And you get its scalar triple product. Clearly this is a number. This is answer is not a vector. It is denoted by U, V, W in this bracket. In the square bracket U, V, W is defined as scalar triple product. Uh, so as is mentioned in your uh, uh, screen, you can see that this is a scalar quantity, which means it's a real number because cross product of these two is a vector and this vector dot this vector will give me a scalar, which means a real number. That's all. There is an alternate formula as usual, uh, which is the, uh, this is the uh, formula for our three dimensional vectors. If vector u is u1, u2, u3 and v is v1i, v2j, v3k v3 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 and w is this, then the scalar triple product is just this determinant u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, w1, w2, w3. This you should remember, this will keep coming often. We will use this very much. Uh, scalar triple product also has a uh, geometric interpretation. Basically, it is a if you have these three vectors, this is vector u, this is vector v, this is vector w. So if these are the three vectors, their scalar triple product is basically its 
triple product. Scalar triple product of UVW is the volume of the parallel or pipette generated by U, V and W. U, V and W are three vectors. You can see in the picture how they generate a parallel or pipette. Parallel or pipette means it's like a cube, but angles are all not 90 degrees. That is defined by U, V and W, their position, I mean their directions. So, scalar triple product of U, V and W gives you volume of this parallel pipette. So, one very easy thing to see is if the volume is zero, that means all these three are in the same plane, which we say they are coplanar. So, if you want to check three of the vectors are coplanar, we just check their scalar triple product is zero. Scalar triple product, as I said, is this is the definition. So, you to just check that this determinant is zero, then they are in the same plane. Uh, there are some easy uh, properties. U, V, W is same as V, W, U, which is same as W, V, U. You see, it's cyclically shifting. U is right in the beginning. You write, bring it right in the end. You get W, uh, sorry, V, W, U. That's what this is. Now you bring the first one to the last one. So you get W, U and V. That's what this is. But if you interchange two of them, that means you keep U as U itself, V, W, if you interchange as W and V, the sign will become negative. All these you can see it from uh, definition of determinant or definition, directly from definition also you can see U, V, U cross W, V dot W, use those definitions and see. And uh, this I already told you, U, V, W, the scalar triple product is zero. If two of the three vectors are equal or one of them is zero or they are coplanar, these are the conditions. Normally we don't bother about the first two, uh, the last one is what is important, that the coplanar, then their scalar triple product is zero. Coplanar means all three vectors are in the same plane. Uh, so let us solve a few quick problems, easy ones. Find u cross v dot w where u is this, v is this, w is this. Don't go about stepwise. This is scalar triple product. So directly you can write u v w is nothing but this determinant. u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, w1, w2, w3. There it is. u1 is u is 1 minus 3, 2. So 1 minus 3, 2. Minus 1, 2, minus 3. Minus 1, 2, minus 3. 2 minus 1, 3, 2 minus 1. Three. So that's the determinant. You evaluate it. I won't do the details here. I hope I have done it correctly. You can check it as minus 8. Uh, same question you can ask in different ways. Find the volume of a parallel of pipette whose sides are this given by this U, B, and W. So which means basically you find this determinant where first row is U, second row is V, third row is W. And uh, there is, you know, I hope I have done it correctly. You can check. Uh, show that these vectors are coplanar. Now, you want to show these three vectors are coplanar. That means volume of the parallel of pipette of these three are zero. That's what I told you. So check what is their scalar triple product. If it is zero, they are coplanar. So that's what is written here. If three vectors are co, sorry, the three vectors are coplanar. If their scalar triple product is zero, how do I find scalar triple product? Same definition. Uh, you this determinant you evaluate you with first row as quotients of u uh, components of u second row as components of v third row as components of w you get this to be zero it, uh, you can carry out this you can evaluate this determinant on your own uh, i think i'll stop here the next part is space curve and uh, its use we will uh, look into it next time uh, in the next class for today, I will stop here. So, do I stop this? Yeah, just one minute. Thank you.